Hi there, it's Robin here. I'm in my little studio and it's a freezing cold winter's day and I thought it was a perfect time to show you how to do felting by machine. So today I'm working on the Benina 790 and I'm going to be showing you this felting tool here. Now this one is um, for this particular machine. So this one's for rotary hook machines and you can also get them for the oscillating Benina sewing machines. So in your kit you will have a needle punch foot, you will have triple needle which is for needle punching on this machine and you will need to get the right um, plate for needle punching for your machine. Now I have got the 790 so my needle plate is for a 7 series and then if you have an 8 series, you will buy a different plate for the 8 series. So you buy the kit, but you need to buy the corresponding plate that goes with your machine. So I'll put that one away because we're not working on the 8 series. This is what the foot looks like. So it's an interesting looking foot. This around here is to protect your fingers because... It has three barbed needles all together that will go into here and come down through the bottom of that. Then when the plate is on, they will punch through the plate. And I think that's the best way of showing you. So they will just punch. And they'll punch perfectly even because we've got the right plate, the right needle and the right foot. Now, when you are working with these, be very, very careful. As I said, they are barbed. And you can punch, needle punch, anything that is a natural fibre. So I'm working on a piece of um, wool here. And I've got some natural fibres here. I've got some wool rovings. I've got some wool, which is just tapestry wool. And I've got a non um, natural fiber to show you that it won't actually work so I've got that as well but if I mix it with the wool I might be able to use it so this one here is um, Angelina hot fix and what this does is it heats to itself so I could use a little piece of this in there but it won't actually become the fabric and felt into the fabric okay so the first thing you need to do on your machine is you need to cut your thread from the top and pull it down through the needle. Never pull your threads back up. And then don't just leave this thread winding um, here because it could get caught around while you're sewing. So wind it back up and 90% of threads will have a little slit on the side for you to lock the thread in. And I'm amazed how many people don't realize that. So that locks the thread in so it's nice and tidy. The next thing we do, I'm gonna take my jewel feed off. So I'm gonna push my jewel feed down and away from me and I'm gonna take my sewing foot off. Then I'm gonna unscrew my needle, take that off, and I'm gonna pop it beside me so I know where that is. And I'm gonna do the screw back up so it doesn't vibrate out while I'm sewing. I'm gonna take my sew plate off. Now to do this, you push two fingers on the corner and you lift your sew plate off. And then at this stage is a good time to clean out your machine. I'm going to open the bottom of my machine. I'm going to take my bobbin case system out. So my whole bobbin case system and my bobbin. And I just taking everything that's inside there out. So I've now got my hook sensor out as well. Good time to put a drop of oil on each of those little felt pads and clean it out. Um, but I'm, but I'm, I'll just grab my little brush. Here we go. So when you're cleaning this out, just get your brush and go right around there and you can see how much dust just came out of that. So keep that cleaned out, people don't realise there's a lot of dust in there. And then also around the outside edge here, you get a build up of dust. So just, you know, make sure it's nice and clean before you start and then one drop of oil on that felt pad and one drop of oil on that felt pad. Felt pad. Right, okay, so I've taken my machine apart. So now I'm going to put on my, um, 
it's got a bit of oil on there. I'm just going to put on my needle punch plate um, and I am going to turn it around so that this fingerprint here is on the back right hand corner and this square is at the back and that's how you know which way it goes on. So you always just put it on one side and hold it and then push it down. There we go. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to put this needle in so it's flat to the back and unscrew that a little bit so I tightened it up and then tighten that back up and make sure it's square that you've put it on square by hand turn the balance wheel to make sure it's going straight up and down through those holes and that you've put it on right then you can put your foot on and that just goes underneath there and pop it up and bring this little lever here down see that little lever so bring that down now I'm going to show you on the screen how you change your machine because I've done a few changes so the first thing you're going to do and remember this is mirror, mirrored in my mirror here I'm going to touch the plate picture here it says nine millimeters so I'm going to touch that and I'm going to come along there's nine millimeters 5.50 and I'm going to push my needle punch picture on. While I'm in here, you'll notice it's also put a star by the needle punch needle. So I need to touch that as well. This is where a lot of the customers go wrong. They do that and they forget to do this and their machine won't sew. So you need to touch that and make it your favorite. So you've got a green tick on your needle punch. You've got a green tick on um, your needle and you'll notice on your screen, your needle is now showing and your punch plate is now showing. Okay, close out of that function. Now I'm going to go into here to my foot, touch that, and I'm going to touch foot 45 because that's the name of the foot. And it will always come up as your favorite because it's clever, these machines. So I'm touching that. Close that out. Now there's one more thing I need to do and I have got my whole shuttle system open. If I don't tell my machine that I'm not using my bobbin sensor, then it will keep stopping because it will expect thread to be in it. So I'm going to go into my little cogs here. And I'm going to go to the picture of the eye. And I have no bobbin thread. And in fact, I have no top thread. So I can turn those off and then we won't have any problem with the machine growling at us saying, where's your thread? Okay, it just safeguards, then you've done everything. Right, so now I'm ready to start. So the first thing you can do is you can get some um, wool rovings. So wool rovings are just a lovely soft fiber. You can split them, um, you can make them into a ball. You can do all sorts of things with them. Oops and then you're going to needle punch them. Now how this works, it's very, very clever, and you can needle punch by hand with needle punch um, needles, single needles and triple needles. So I'm just going to lay my piece of wool here, and um, I'm just going to stitch it, just to show you. So be very careful, keep your fingers out of the road. This is what this guard's for, and I'm just going to hold my thread, and I'm just going to needle punch it. So all I'm doing is going around like that. And I go, oh, actually, I'll bring that over a bit and make it more of a round circle. You can pull it up and then you can re-punch that sped up. So I like the look of that. It's not hard. Now, I have now felted that piece of wool rovings onto there. So what I can do now is turn it over and I can see from the back very clearly where I've started to felt. So now I need to do this again. So this is my second run. So I can either go up and down. I've got my machine on slow. Or I can go back around in a circle. It doesn't matter as long as you've secured it. Gonna love it, it's so easy. Turn it over again. And now I've done one row um, on the top. I've punched once on the bottom. Now I'm doing my last row on the top. So again, I can just go around in circles. 
and I have now needle felted. That's not hard. So that is how you needle felt. Now, if I try and get, where did I put that, um, some of this, if I try to needle punch this down, it's not a natural fibre and it's not going to work, but if I mix it with a piece of this here, and we mix that in with that to give us a little bit of a shimmer, You watch what happens. So I'm just going to start again and I'm just going to punch through the layers. This can still pull up because it doesn't really um, set into the wool. However, if I just add a little bit more of this, then we have lift off and it just gives you a little bit of shimmer and a little bit of color it's quite good fun so just if you want to add it to it you can but i'm going to show you what you actually do with the uh... so there's my first layer nice and shiny turn it over not sure what i'm making here but anyway turn it over and now i'm just going to make sure i'm covering the whole area And in fact, that is coming through because it's mixed together. Turn it over again. And now I'm on my last run. So I'm just going to... And try and go right outside the edge so you cover all your pieces of wool rovings. Now what I could do with this now is I could get some of my wool which is just a tapestry wool you buy by the by the yarn and this is just a tapestry wool in fact I will do this color this is quite a good one because it's a nice color and it's nice and bright with it my scissors so anything you want to felt you can felt as long as you're working with natural fibers I'm just doing a little outline here. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to felt this on. It's going to look like a little butterfly when I'm finished. <laughs> That's the theory. I don't like to have a plan when I'm sewing. I just like to do it. Isn't that amazing that you can felt that on? So I'm just going, oops, I'm just going around the edge here. I missed it. Doesn't matter, you just go back. I love doing stuff like this. It's very, very cool and it's very creative because you just do whatever you want to do. Put some more on and you can make it as thick as you like. It's not looking like a butterfly, it's looking like a piece of wool sewn over some felting. Now we're going to get a real creative thing because I'm just going to go anywhere now. And the butterfly was a thought. Crazy, isn't it? You can just go anywhere and everywhere. When you've finished doing your felting on this side, remember you've got to turn it over and do the other side. It's a new bug that I've just made. Turn it over and there you can see that wool has come through to the back and now you're going to felt from the back. Just go right over the whole lot. Because you can see exactly where you've been so you know where to go and then turn it over and you're on your last run. So this just makes it part of the fabric. So you could draw a design on there and do whatever you want to do on your design. That's just actually incredible.
Now on this one, what you can do is once you've finished doing your felting, you can then do stitching on top of it. So I'm just going to show you. My sister gave me her top, and she said it's got holes in it. Look. It's got moth holes in it. And I said, oh, well, I'll just do some felting over it. So what I'm going to do, um, which is the right side, I'm just going to turn this over to the right side, and I'm just going to felt. She wanted... Um, she wanted a rust colour. Oops. So if I put a bit of orange underneath this thread, uh, uh, first of all, and then put this thread over top, that's going to make rust. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover up the holes with this wool roving. So I'm just going to cover up the holes with the wool roving. And I'm just going to make a little circle. And there's another hole somewhere. Where did I see it? There's another hole there. So cover up the circle. I don't want any sparkles on it. don't want any sparkles. Cover up the circle. And yeah. The hole. It is a circle hole. With a circle. So I just put them all on first. And there's another big one up here. And this is how you can do a garment. It's really quick and easy and make it something a little bit different. And I mean, it's no good like it is, so you might as well have a bit of a go. And again, I don't really have a plan. I just start doing it and something will create out of it. Bring that back up. Do not get your fingers, it hurts. Now, those three holes are done. I'm going to turn it over to the wrong side. And I can see, oh, it's good actually. You can see clearly the holes. It's actually really, really good. So now I'm going to just felt this. That's covered. Felt this one. That's covered. Felt this one. Let your imagination go wild. So there, I have got three big holes covered up. Now, I could do that in grey, and you wouldn't even know they were there. Now I'm going to take my foot off. I'm going to take my barbed needle off. I'm going to put it over there because it's very dangerous. I'm going to take my sew plate off. I'll put those all over there so you can see them. Right, now I'm going to put my shuttle system back in. Just make sure I've got it in the right position. Yes, I have. Oh, by the way, when you felt, your machine will end up with a lot of fluff. So clean it out. Look at this. It really makes a mess. So make sure you clean it out before you go putting um, everything back together. Put that in. Yep, that's in. And I'm going to put my bobbin case back in. I'm going to put my sew plate back on. And I'm going to put my needle back on. Now remember what we have to do. We have to tell our machine that we've done everything. So again, I'm going on to here. And remember, it's mirror imaged. So I'm going to touch my needle punch plate. I'm going to go 9mm. I could have put the straight stitch plate on actually because I'm going to do freehand. Um, I'm going to put the straight needle back on and I am going to I am going to get a freehand foot number 78. No, I'm not. I'm going to use foot number nine. My update didn't work. I put a, I did a, um, hmm. Seventy-two is not showing. Okay, I did a new update, but it didn't obviously work, so I'll have to do it again. 
So I can, I've selected number nine. I'm putting my feed dogs down. I'm actually going to change my plate and I'm going to put my straight stitch plate on. So I'm going to tell my machine I've got my zero plate. Reason being, I'm going to do freehand. The straight stitch plate has got a single hole. And it's got a mark here. And remember, this goes to the bottom back right hand corner. So I've told my machine I've got my zero plate on and I need to upgrade my machine, update my machine. So if you've got a machine at home and you've got a new foot and your machine doesn't recognize your foot, that means that your software needs updating. Now remember how we go and tell the machine we've got thread on the top and thread on the bottom. We go, we're closing out of here. We're going to cogs. We're going to we're going to um, our eye and we're going to turn our thread on and we're going to turn our bobbin sensor back on. So now everything is going to work with our machine. Okay? So I've pretty much tricked my machine and told it what foot that I'm using and now I'm going to use this colour because she wants the rust to show more than orange. So you'll notice this thread I stood up because this has been wound around, so I bring it off this reel of thread. This one is cross wound, so it lies down. Okay, and always match this up to the size of the thread. And grab your thread. Now I've put on a 90 jeans denim, so it's got a nice big eye. And always hold your thread till you get down to here. Let it go. And then as you're doing your needle threader, when it's halfway down, hook it around the bar, push it down, slide it in and let it go. And then you can pull that lovely big loop. Now, whenever you do um, freehand work, you do want to bring your bobbin thread up to the top. This foot I'm using is a height adjustable foot. So I can adjust it up and down. It's foot 72 and um, 73 and I can adjust it up and down depending on the thickness of my wadding or what I'm sewing. So that's why I've got that foot on. So I'm going to go on to here and I am going to pretty much, I'll just bring up my bobbin thread first. One tap on the foot control, one tap up, brings up the bobbin thread. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of colour in this um, wool roving because I don't want it so orange. So I'm just going to put my top tension down because I don't want to see my bobbin thread. So bringing my top tension down. And I'm just going to go around in a circle. And I'm going to dull down my orange. Oops. That's looking better. It's a bit duller. Now, if I want to make a little feature, what I'd do is I would get some tear away and I would slip it in behind here. I'll just cut that thread. Put a bit of tear away in behind here because I want to do some fancy work on it. So I'm going to cut that thread. I'm going to cut that thread. I've dulled that down so it looks a little bit better. I'm going to bring my bobbin thread back up to the top now, again. Now this time, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to make stamens and I'm going to make them go outside my design. I've shown some of you this before. So you're going to work with your straight sew and your zigzag. So I'm going to straight stitch out and back and out again. That was a very bad straight stitch. This is quite thick wool, so I need to do it more. Put it onto zigzag. I can't. I cannot do that because I've got my straight stitch plate on. See, you can't change your mind halfway through. So now that I've done that, this is good because I forgot all about doing the zigzag. I'm now going to put this plate back on and tell my machine because I cannot do stamens with my straight stitch plate on. So I'm putting on my, make sure I don't have my thread caught. See, even I can make great mistakes putting my 9mm plate back on, 
telling my machine in the mirror here, zero, nine. See, I just wanted to make sure you knew how to do it. So now I can do what I want to do. Classic. Okay, should we try that again? Bobbin thread up. Nope. Or not. There it is. We'll try that again. Make sure you've got both threads ready to go when you start. So, bobbin thread up. Now when you do this, make sure you don't always go back to the center because you can get a very heavy finish and it's not very nice. So just cut all those extra threads. Which ones am I working with? That one. No, we'll wait till I'm finished. So we'll lock it off. Now this time, let's try that again. So straight stitch out, straight stitch back, straight stitch out, zigzag. So now I'm going to zigzag. And I want to make a knot, oh, I'll make it a bit wider. Cool. And then straight stitch back in. That's looking better. Right, now go out to this one. Now when I get to here, I'm not at a right angle. I'm going to put my needle down. So I'm going to put the needle down. I'm going to turn so that my stamens are at a right angle. Make a nice big fat stamen. Make a feature. Go back in. Now remember, don't always go the same way. Turn. Go sideways, out, in, out, stamens. So lots of stitching. Turn, out, in, out, stamens. And back in again. It's good fun. So you can make a real feature of a hole. Hope she likes it. Too bad if she doesn't. I'll probably end up with it. Out, in, out, stamens, and back in. Remember, don't always go back to the center. I'm just gonna get rid of those threads. But that makes a really plain jacket into something a little bit more interesting and we've dulled down all that orange by using a nice um, thread. Oops. I can wind this down actually, it's too high isn't it? Up this way. There we go. So you can't get much easier than that. I'll just stop that there and show you. And I'll cut that thread. So there you go. That is how you can put on some wool rovings, freehand stitch it, and then whip out and make some stamens. Now I'm going to show you on this one so you can see it clearer. So wool rovings. But this time I used a totally different colour to do my stamens and I've done that onto some wool fabric and then I've appliqued it on. So I'm going to show you how to make one of these next. So this is a doorstop, a woolen doorstop to keep all the cold out in the winter. There we go.